This Week at NASA. The biggest storm on the sun in years erupted on January 22nd with a huge solar flare, an Earth-directed coronal mass ejection, or CME, and a burst of fast-moving, highly energetic protons. According to NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, these solar energetic particles caused the strongest solar radiation storm since September 2005. We're expecting to reach uh, the uh, solar maximum uh, uh, in terms of activity sometime around next year. So we're expecting to have uh, more uh, these kinds of, of uh, uh, solar eruptions in, in the coming uh, two or three years. Closely monitored by NASA scientists, the storm caused no major disruptions to operating technological systems in space or on the ground, such as satellite communications or high voltage power transmission. The warming of the Earth's surface continues. That, according to scientists at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies in New York, who say the average global surface temperature in 2011 was the ninth warmest since 1880. The finding continues a trend in which nine of the ten warmest years in the modern meteorological record have occurred since 2000. GISS monitors global surface temperatures on an ongoing basis and has found that the average temperature around the globe in 2011 was 0.92 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it was around 1950. To say this is a problem we don't have to concern ourselves with about until a few years from now is a mistake. We need to concern ourselves about it or concern ourselves with it now so that the outcome a few years from now is something we're well positioned to deal with. Former astronaut Scott Altman addressed Mississippi's state legislators during NASA Day at the Capitol in Jackson. The event included exhibits highlighting the Stennis Space Center's role in the past, present, and future of America's space program, as well as the center's contributions to Mississippi's economy and quality of life. It's AGHS on blue and Coltrank on uh, red. There's nothing new about satellites in space, but flying them inside the International Space Station? That's what teams of high school students from the U.S. and abroad did in the Zero Robotics Spheres Challenge 2011 Finals. Televised live on NASA TV, the event featured these bowling ball sized devices called Synchronized Position Hold Engage Reorient Experimental Satellites, being flown on the station using software programs developed by the students. Operated and maintained by the Ames Research Center, the SPHERES National Laboratory Facility on board the ISS is exploring whether these mini-satellites can affordably test spacecraft navigation in a microgravity environment. The SPHERES competition is a collaboration of NASA, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. About 350 students celebrated the 19th annual Young Astronaut Day at the Glenn Research Center. A variety of activities appealed to their interest in aeronautics, space science, and engineering. The younger children enjoy challenges like balancing marbles on a plate in a vacuum chamber, while the older members of our next generation of explorers investigated the building of robotic vehicles able to travel across a simulated planetary surface. Selected as a NASA astronaut after seven rejections, Cleveland area native Mike Foreman spoke of how persistence can help realize your dreams. If you fail at a goal the first time, the second time, maybe even the third time, I would, uh, I would hope that you guys would get back up and keep trying, you know, to achieve the goal. It might just be, you know, to make the soccer team. The crowning activity of the day? The use of some 2,000 cans of food to build a mini space shuttle later donated to a Cleveland food bank. An engaging new NASA program brings the excitement of space exploration to children while teaching them to live a healthy lifestyle. Inspired by First Lady Michelle Obama's Let's Move initiative, NASA's Train Like an Astronaut program aims to increase opportunities for kids to become more physically and mentally active. 
the program uses activities similar to those performed by astronauts before, during, and after space flights to help 8 to 12 year olds develop good fitness and nutrition habits. It could also be for the, us older kids uh, the, because we always need the, the adults to team in and work with our children to improve their, their physical fitness as well as to help them learn about how to live a healthier lifestyle and good nutrition. The activities in Train Like an Astronaut align with national education standards and were developed in cooperation with NASA scientists and fitness professionals who work directly with our astronauts. Actress and spaceflight activist Nichelle Nichols, who portrayed Lieutenant Uhura in the original Star Trek TV series, found many friendly fans during a recent warp speed visit to NASA Dryden Flight Research Center's facilities in Southern California. Nichols related her experiences, both as a member of the Star Trek cast and as an advocate for human exploration of space, to an appreciative audience of Dryden employees. That's what our tax dollars are doing. Uh, gaining us the future, gaining us beyond our wildest dreams, what humankind can dream of, humankind can do, and, and much more. Nichols considers one of her greatest accomplishments was helping open the door for the first women and persons of minority ethnicity to become NASA astronaut candidates, including Mae Jemison and current NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden. She stressed that Americans not only have the opportunity, but the duty to ensure that NASA's space exploration program remains viable as it seeks to go where no man or woman has gone before. I was always talking to Star Trek fans about why space, why it's important. It's our space. Well, do you understand that that's not them doing that, that's ours? It belongs us, NASA belongs to me. Yeah. Say it, everybody. NASA belongs to me. Liftoff. We have liftoff with Apollo 14. 41 years ago, on January 31st, 1971, the Apollo 14 mission began with its launch from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Astronauts Alan Shepard, Stuart Rusa, and Edgar Mitchell manned NASA's third mission to land on the moon. It looks like you're about on the bottom step and on the surface. Not bad for it, old man. Shepard and Mitchell spent nearly 33 hours in the Fra Mauro Highlands, the same area to have been explored by the aborted Apollo 13 mission. They conducted two lunar EVAs and collected more material and scientific data than Apollo 11 and 12 combined. And famously, Commander Shepard swung the first golf club in space, sending two balls across the lunar frontier. Apollo 14 touched down safely in the Pacific Ocean on February 9, 1971. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, or to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.